Okay, today we're going to learn how to use the uncertainty calculations that we need to do in Excel itself without having to use any other software. So right here I just opened my output, my file output directly from LabVIEW. I deleted the headers and like I did in the previous video with MathCAD. And now I'm going to show you how to use this with uncertainty values. So the way that you can use this is you just put in the equation indirectly. So then that one big long equation that I have in the PowerPoint that I showed you guys that I made, I mean not the PowerPoint, the PDF, you can take that equation and plug it directly into Excel here. So if you look at it, I'm going to go ahead and blow it up like I did last time in the previous video so you can see it. And I'm going to zoom. Let's go here and I'll zoom. 400 is probably too big. Alright, so I'm going to zoom to 150 just so I can see it. So what you're going to do here is this is what your is equal to is equal to your uncertainty. So we know that. And right here we have all the values that we need. So I'm going to insert an extra column here. And this is where I'm going to put my uncertainty for temperature. So I'm going to call this the UT part. I'll call it, this is my time, right? This is my temperature. And then this is the uncertainty of temp. So that's what my columns are. And I'm going to insert another column, and I'm going to put the uncertainty of temp. And I'm going to put that as, let's say, a half, half a degree C. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type in the equation once and then I'm going to use the Excel function here, this little bottom right corner, to drag that equation through. Now I gotta be careful where I put my dollar signs in my Excel numbers because you all know that when you put a dollar sign in front of the C and the 3 it would hold the cell and would not change no matter how much I pull it down. So like I type in equal to cell C like I say equal to this cell and in front of the three I put a dollar sign. What that does is it always holds the three, the number three. So it's always holding the number three in that direction. But then if I pull it this direction, you see that it's actually moving the column. So what happens is when you hold the three, the number three, and you're staying in the same column, it'll keep the same cell because you're not changing columns. But if you change columns, it will keep the same row number but it will shift over one. So it will go to E3 or D3 like this one did. Now, if I put a dollar sign in front of both, if I put a dollar sign in front of both, then what it's going to do is going to hold that cell no matter where I drag it. So I can drag it this way, I can drag it, I can drag it this way, and if you click on it here, it's still three C3. I can drag it this way, if you click on it here, it's still C3 and then it always holds that cell. It doesn't change that cell as you drag. Now if I get rid of the number three on there and I drag down, you can see that it changes the number three but keeps the column steady. So then now if I change this direction, you will notice that it keeps the column steady. So keep that in mind when you're doing formulas in Excel that if you want to hold a specific cell, a specific column, and you're changing columns and rows, you need to pay attention to where you actually hold those values in using the dollar sign. So I'm going to type this equation into, lab, into Excel by hitting equals square root SQ, SQRT, which is a square root function in, lab, in Excel. Then I'm going to use a parentheses minus my T value is this column right here and I'm not going to hold that because I'm just dragging straight down and I'm not changing columns or anything so it's always going to take that value divided by parentheses natural log ln is the natural log function in lab in Excel and then I'm going to take my point in time y, t of t minus my initial value which is t which is y infinity my y infinity which is 97 in this case and then don't forget your parentheses here you're gonna get lost in parentheses in Excel so make sure you match parentheses correctly divided by my initial which is 25 minus 100 well 97 actually 
and then in parentheses. Then I'm going to square that. Then I'm going to multiply it by my cell again of temperature minus the infinity temperature, 97. Close that parentheses, close that parentheses. So what I did here is I close the parentheses for the subtraction, and then the next one is the parentheses for the denominator, so that this denominator is all divided by that once. Now I'm going to add another parenthesis here, and I'm going to square this whole thing.